Hi, y'all. So, the Living Dinosaur did a video the other day, Holy Hallucinations number 40. He'd taken a, a bit of a hiatus, and uh, I decided to go back and look at some of his old content. I'm going to talk about something I was talking about in Holy Hallucinations 31. But there's this uh, notion that came up with that Ian Juby was talking about using a conservative estimate. This is something I used to run into in law enforcement. <laughs> I'm gesticulating the running. I used to, really, I, no, really, I'd run right into it. Um, where a collision would be investigated, for example, and one of the one of the investigating officers would say something like, "Oh, well, I used a conservative estimate on this because it works in in people's favor." I'm like, "How? You have a cl okay? Whatever. Say you have two cars that are going to collide. Once once you're at that point of no return, where nothing you do matters anymore, the collision is going to happen. The system is there fixed. There is a a set quantity of energy, a set amount of momentum." that you're just stuck with having to account for. And that is uh, transferred and dissipated in various ways throughout the, uh, the progression of the collision. And whatever you fail to attribute to one party has to be attributed to the other party, or if it's more people, whatever's failed to be attributed here has to be distributed among the other people. And I'm like, that's, what, kind of, what kind of forensic work is that? It's not, well, I'm gonna give this guy an advantage by giving that guy a disadvantage. How about, how about this, just a, uh, calculate things, count things, you know, really just be very careful about it so you're not having to do these conservative and uh, or liberal estimates. This is like a liberal or conservative interpretations of legal instruments. It's like, it's a legal text. What is a conservative, Justice Scalia said this, what's a conservative estimate of what the word say? Is that halfway between uh, <laughs> what you want to hear and what they say? I mean, what's a liberal one? Twice as far removed from that? It doesn't make any sense. It says what it says. You give it, you want to give it a fair interpretation, a reasonable one. And sometimes, because things are ambiguous, uh, you can only do that within certain constraints. Well, you can always only ever do it within certain constraints. Uh, but you want those constraints to be as narrow as possible so that your lower bound and your upper bound aren't that far apart. And, and then you, you can say, well, at, uh, here are the possible ways this accident could have happened or this collision could have happened, and things like that. So when you when just because of the sensitivity of the instruments that you use to record the data is such that there's an error built into it, you give a range and then the conservative would be the lower and the uh, uh, liberal would be the, the, the higher. Or uh, I think I said that, I may have said that backwards, I wasn't listening to me, which is good advice for the rest of you, so go ahead and take it. Anyway, that's an appropriate use of saying conservative and liberal. You're saying, look, there are some error bounds here. I can't say with, with, uh, with I, I can't say with absolute certainty what value is what which values are true but i can tell you the range that they have to be so when i was listening to ian juby talk about using a conservative estimate of the uh, population growth in the history of the planet for the last 4500 years um of uh, what was it 0.46 percent i was thinking where the hell did that come from and, and, and the scenarios like i described you go out and you measure things uh with in populations you go out and you you count bodies you're like oh one little, two little, three little Indians, four little... I don't... wait. One little, two little, three little Native Americans, four little... It doesn't work quite the same way. Anyway, you go out and count, and, and you, you make estimates like that. You don't need to count every individual person, uh, but you, you have to do some sampling of some type. And so I was trying to figure out where Ian Juby came up with this. And I may have thought about this when I watched Holy Hallucinations 31 the first time, and it just slipped my mind or I forgot about it. But when I was watching it again yesterday, I was like, I know where he come. I know. I have figured out how he came up with it, so or one of the ways that he would have come up with it. There are a couple different variations on this, depending on his math skills, and we know he's a super genius, which, given as much as he relies on his Mensa credentials, credentials, I'm sure it means he had to ask someone to help him. But anyway, don't be scared by the math. Uh, you have this general exponential uh, formula here. This deals with uh, continuous growth, since we're talking about uh, populations. Generally, that's, uh, you want to model that with continuous growth. That's the, the compounding that you want in this is continuous. So you have uh, people today. That's what the little man with the T is. That's the population today. You have your initial value, the E for the, the continuous bit. Uh, if you don't know why that's there, just believe me. There's a good reason for it. I'm not going to explain it in this video. And then you'll have your, uh, your this R represents the percent uh, growth rate. And then T represents the time. And Ian Juby is using the same kind of uh, problem with having constraints that are just there and then trying to... Here's, okay, here's what I'm saying. We have 
a set population today. All right, so there's that. In the same way in a collision, once you get to the point of no return, you have a set amount of energy that you just have to account for. So Ian Juby is stuck with all of the currently living people. He's got to take account of that. Can't ignore it. Well, he could, but he'd be even more dishonest than he normally is. He's also got a timeline, 4,500 years. Can't get away from that. And the population grows uh, as time goes on. So he's got some things he just has to contend with, so he comes up with a model. And also for this initial uh, population, which is back after Noah's Flood, uh, he says that was eight people. So he's stuck with that. Then all he has to do is solve this equation to find out R. So we have seven billion people living today. Well, approximately seven billion people living today. Oops. And that's going to equal eight e to the R uh, 4,500. Th those are the years that uh, he he says uh, have elapsed since Noah's flood. So you solve everything there real fancy like, so you divide out 8. Just believe me here when I tell you that gives you 875 million, something like that. Uh, so that goes away, and now you've got this, and you've got this logarithm to do it, so you take the log of this side, uh, you take the log of that, and then what you wind up with is um, the natural log of 875 million, whatever that number actually is, and then you'll have r, uh, 4,500, the natural log of e is just 1, divide out 4,500, and that leaves you with r, and then so you'll have, uh, this comes down, divide that out by 4,500 from both sides, and uh, when you, you crunch all those numbers, you get a number that is approximately 0 .0046, not exactly, but approximately there, good enough for government work. Now, one of the things, uh, in the same way in the collision thing, you just have to account for uh, the conditions you're stuck with, the parameters that you are just dealt, that you just must contend with. And whatever you fail to account, uh, attribute to one person is attributed to another person. Whenever you make a change here, you have to allow for some other change in the system somewhere else. You can't get away from that. And this is a consequence of just the system existing in the way that it does, but also the model that you have constructed that you claim represents uh, this particular system. So, what you have to be able to do, uh, there are two ways you can look at um, functions. There are extrapolation and interpolation. Extrapolation, extrapolation is extending the, the function beyond the data that you actually have, so it's making predictions about the future. And then there are interpolations, which are things that should be within your data set. Uh, whatever you claim is giving rise to, uh, to your model, all the data that should be trapped within the model, the bounds that you've established, needs to be accounted for. Uh, by your model. So Ian Juby, that super super duper genius, has given us uh, a, a model and that is that uh, the um, what is it, 8 e to the point zero zero four six t will equal the uh, since it's Ian Juby uh, who's doing this We'll give it a frowny face because we're going to run into some problems. That'll give you the population at some time t. Okay. So uh, we're at 7 billion people today. So if you put in 4,500 years for t, you do indeed get approximately 7 billion people. Now, using his conservative estimate of 0.46% uh, growth rate, um, the living dinosaur went and looked at, I think, the population in 1950 or 1960 and noted that there was about a two... The, the error was like he was off by a factor of about two. Well, if you go back to something like um, 1900, which would be when uh, T instead of 4500 is 4385, this model says that you have a population in 1900 of 4,605,152,128 people. If you know anything about the world's history, you'll know that not that many people were actually living in uh, 1900. It was about 1.656 billion people, which is a uh, an error of 278%, or about a factor of three is what you're talking about. He's off by about the three times as many people as you should, you should have, 2.78. Well, that is not such, I guess, a colossal error on these types of things, but if you go back to... Uh, the, the model further back, uh, the, your problems uh, are, are multiplied. So let's go back to the time of Jesus. So 2,500 years ago, um, I'm sorry, 2,000 years ago, 
Ian Juby's model says that we had 789,726 people on the planet. Uh, the estimates, this is actually from going out and like digging up things, looking at records, or, you know, to the extent that they can, the range is between 170 million and 300 million people. This is not a trivial error that he has going on. It's about, <laughs> was that three orders of magnitude off? So the, uh, <laughs> if, it, if it was 170 million people alive at the time, that's uh, an error that's off by 21,526%. And <laughs> if it was 300 million, that's 37,987% off. So that's uh, 215 to 379. The, the factor, uh, you're off by 215 to uh, 379. That's not a trivial <laughs> error that that you want to find in, 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 <laughs> in, your, in your data. Now, he, he quotes this number from uh, this CIA World Factbook, or whatever the hell it's called, of a, uh, a growth rate that uh, was 1.092%, and then he's saying that his 40s, his 0.46% is a conservative estimate. Well, I have another conservative estimate, if the standard against which we're comparing the, I guess, the liberal, or whatever, uh, standard is... Uh, if that is actually going to be 1.092%, I have another liberal, I'm sorry, I have another conservative estimate, uh, 0.75%. Uh, so if we uh, we uh, change this little number here from 4.6 to 7.5, then we should have living today. Give me a second. Uh, there you see it. Three quadrillion six hundred thirty-five trillion two hundred three billion six hundred ninety-five million seven hundred eighty thousand seven hundred six people, give or take one or two. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Um, but if we really want to just use the data that uh, that he's plucking out of a book and saying that, that you know this is the standard or whatever, we we should expect to have today with a growth rate of just one point oh nine two percent. Give me a minute. Um, 17 sextillion, 551 quintillion, 766 quadrillion, 301 trillion, 450 billion, 100 million, 192,000, 909 people. According to the last census uh, that I saw, <laughs> estimating the population today, uh, we may be off by 10 or 15 people at least. <laughs> so... Um, th this isn't a conservative estimate. It's not an estimate at all. This is just uh, rejiggering your data to, to find numbers that just happen to work right now that are convenient. But once you propose a mathematical formula, you are stuck with its consequences. Now, it's of course acceptable the further out in the future a perspective model goes, the less accurate you expect it to be. Because there are things we don't know yet in our data collection methods that aren't perfect. But whatever is true about the distant future and, our, uh, and, and applying mathematical models, the one thing that is beyond doubt is whatever is contained within your data, that is the bounds of your data. So here it's uh, Noah's Flood and the population today and this formula that, that uh, supposedly models it. Uh, you ha you're not allowed the, uh, those types of very large errors within that data set. You need to actually, uh, within some really good bounds, account for the data uh, that that you know, and I, I guess if you're off just if you're off by just a factor of two uh, for certain things, I suppose that uh, you, you can live with that. I mean, it, you would want it to be better, but our data collection methods are imperfect. But when you're off by a factor of <laughs> uh, a couple hundred, you you probably run into some problems somewhere, and you might need to unfuck yourself and rethink your model. But of course, uh, as a, 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 a <laughs> a good little creationist. We know there's one thing he's, a, he's averse to, and that is thinking. Uncharacteristically, I'm editing in something I forgot to say in the last video when I did the original take, and uh, if you go watch Holy Hallucinations 31 or 32, there's a section in there where Ian Juby has this little folksy kind of uh, example to relate to his audience, and it's uh, you take a whole bunch of dollar bills, you stack them end on end, and you'll have a stack of dollar bills so large it goes to the moon and back twice. 
Well, I can come up with those kind of silly little folksy uh, stories so I can bond with you, my audience, the people whom I, I love having around, and uh, to talk about the magnitude of Ian Juby's error. So, at the time of Jesus, when I was talking about that uh, in the earlier part of this video, the scale of the error is such that uh, you can translate it in the following way. If you wanted to drive from Barstow, California to North Carolina using I-40, when you get on I-40, there's a sign that says, North Carolina, 2,554 miles away. Well, the magnitude of error between the real number of people who lived uh, when Jesus was around and what Ian Juby's model says would be the number of people who lived when Jesus was, uh, is around is equivalent to believing that instead of driving 2,554 miles to get from Barstow, California to the terminus of I-40 in North Carolina, you only have to drive about six and a half to seven miles. So you can get there and just a couple of minutes at highway speed. Much of the highway speed on I-40 is uh, 70 miles an hour, so if you speed a little bit, you can do that in under six minutes. Uh, that's if the population was 300 million, if it was 170 million, it's about, what was it, 11 and a half, 12, 13 miles from uh, Barstow, California to North Carolina. So that's the, the kind of error that Ian Juby has built into his um, <laughs> model. All right, you guys have a good day.